Okay guys, so for this week's media demonstration, we're gonna talk about oil pastels again. And we're gonna talk about them, you know, just a little bit differently than we have before. I try to mix it up a little. You know, I've told you before that there's lots of different brands of oil pastels. Last week we were talking about chalk pastels, and this shows you, this one says oil, they're not chalk. And so I think some people think that a pastel is a pastel is a pastel, but that is not true. Um, so this week we're talking about oil pastels. I like Crayola. I like to get the 28 color box. There's lots of choices in it and uh, they're really fun. So the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, is the fact that, you know, once you get going with these pastels, as you can see, uh, they sometimes break in half. They sometimes get pretty dirty. Like this is a white, it's got blue all over it. And uh, sometimes the wrapper comes off, like this one is like half off. Uh, so you can see that it's clean under there, but still, sometimes wrappers come all the way off. But what I wanna tell you is these are great because they're zero waste, really. So this is a cardboard box, okay? So this is a recyclable material. But also you use these pastels until they disappear. So they don't need to be brand new. They don't need to look perfect in order to work really well. So, for example, today uh, I wanted to show you, this is some extra paper. So this yellow has got some gunk on it. So what do you do? Well, one thing you can do is you can just start cleaning it off. And you can see that by doing that, it takes all that extra gunk off of there. And so sometimes people like to clean these before they ever get started. And then they just you are know, ready to use when they are. That's one thing. You can also just kind of... Do a little bit of cleaning ahead of time just so you have it ready for when you are, when you do the art lesson, I mean. So you can do it way ahead of time or you can do it like I am. I'm about to use this yellow, so I wanted to show you how that works. So I cleaned it off. It's looking better than it was. Um, also today, guys, we're going to talk about some things that you need. This is the black Prismacolor pencil I've told you about many times. This is the one I recommend. It's a colored pencil, but it's got a really high quality wax that the pencil is made with, so it creates a really dense black line, similar to a Sharpie line. And also it cuts through the oil pastel really well. So this is the one I recommend. Today we're also going to be talking about the humble pencil, the regular old pencil, okay? And so in this drawing, there is a border. And as you can see, I did the border in pencil. I did it very lightly. And we're going to use this eraser in just a couple minutes. I'll show you how that works. Um, we've got the manual pencil sharpener. Again, this is for the Prismacolor pencil. That is because this is made with wax. You don't want to sharpen this in an electric sharpener because it will mess it up for you guys. So I'm going to set these things aside and remind you one more time, if you want one of these refrigerator magnets, guys, I would love to mail you one. How do you get one, though? Anybody know? That's right, you do it by tagging, by liking, by loving, by sharing, all those things, leaving comments, different things that help us out. Our tub needs your help, guys, to stay going through this pandemic. And this is a very easy way to help us out. It makes a huge difference. All right, guys, so we are going to now work on our project. And I wanted to take a moment to just take a little pause here and just take a look at our drawing. All right, guys, so we're going to use the oil pastels today, like I mentioned. And so as you can see, I've got my little pencil line here that we talked about. And what I want you to do is if you do this with a Sharpie, and I tell my students this, and sometimes they just don't understand what I'm saying. So you're going to trace the pencil line, okay? You can do the best you can. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. But what I want you to do is skip over anything you bump into. So yes, my pencil line bumps into the top of this. It goes right through here. I can see just a little of it there and just a little of it there and a little there. And so everybody's drawing is different every time. That's as much as I would see of that pencil line, okay? So now I'm gonna put my Sharpie away. I'm gonna take out my pencil and I'm just gonna take a moment with my eraser and just erase the pencil lines that are left over because even though they're light and the oil pastel would probably cover over them pretty well, they might show up as well. They might just kind of, you know, not be the way you want them to be. So take a moment, 
erase those pencil lines. All right, guys, so back to cleaning the pastels. So you can see I was working on cleaning my yellow. It's always good to have some free draw paper handy. And that way you can take your pastels and you can clean them off when you need to or when you want to. See how I've cleaned that yellow off? And this white is pretty dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of clean that off a little bit. This particular art lesson, uh, the colors don't have to be super duper clean because a lot of things in nature have these different colors in them. As you can see, this kind of already looks like something that might be on a pumpkin or a gourd. So I'm not gonna spend too much time cleaning that. I just wanted you to know that you can always clean your oil pastels if you feel like they're dirty. All right, guys, so we are gonna get started with our pumpkin, okay? So our pumpkin is right here. And yes, pumpkins are orange, but there's also some shading. I mean, there's there's like the way the light hits the pumpkin, there's where the shadow is. And so what I'd like you to think about is yes, the main color for sure, right? But also what is maybe a lighter color and a slightly darker color, okay? So with these three colors, we're gonna have some shading. So one thing I think people do is sometimes, there are many ways to color, but you just don't have to press that hard with an oil pastel. And we are gonna do some rubbing, okay? But the rubbing, is gonna come after we put the color on. I think some people like put the color on, do some rubbing, put the color on, do some rubbing, and then they're like, oh, it won't work. And that's because there's not enough pastel on the paper. Because what you're doing when you're rubbing is the heat from your finger is melting it. That's true. But it's also putting the colors together. So you have to have a little bit more pastel on your paper in order for that to work. So you can see how I've created a little bit of light and shadow on my pumpkin. And I'm gonna just put that color right on there. Nice and neat. Put a little more orange on there. And yeah, that looks good. I mean, I do like it, it looks good, but I always feel like people need to think about taking it to the next step, the next level. So one way we can do that is by rubbing. And so I'm gonna use my finger here and I'm just gonna start to rub this in. And what happens is, as I mentioned, the heat from your finger is kind of working with oil in the pastel because oil will melt. And so it is melting it and it is blending it. And so it just looks really nice it's a very nice effect. It's just something I hope you'll try. And these drawings are fun because you can draw them over and over again. You can add all kinds of stuff. As you can see in this one, I've got an apple and some pears and in addition to my pomegranate and my gourds and my squash. Every drawing is different every time. And that's why it's so much fun. So my pumpkin looks fine. I'm gonna talk about the stem in the same way. Think about your colors. Like I've got a green here and I have a, um, another, oh, I'll do this one actually, sorry. I've got a lighter shade, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take it lighter and I'm gonna do that. So it's sort of similar. You see the similarities? Got three shades here. I'm just gonna take my color that I wanna use first. Just kinda add it on there a little bit. Take a little bit of my dark color. Just kinda add it here and there spots but then I'm going to add that yellow I'm going to make sure I get that yellow in there and yeah again it looks good good thing I have more than one finger right so rub it in and I'm going to let it just sit like that so I'm going to do the rest of this in time lapse I just want to point out to you again why this pencil is so important so what you do is is after you are done rubbing you go back and you get those lines to pop out again and you do that with this pencil. Now the pencil really should not be used until the very end. I just wanted to kind of give you a quick sort of preview, but that pencil is super important. It makes all these lines stand out and that is going to make a huge difference at the end, the way your drawing looks. Okay guys, we're gonna do the rest of this in time-lapse. 
you're ready, I'm ready. Here we go. So that is um, a nice example of how oil pastel can be done and this black pencil makes such a huge difference I think you saw as I was outlining everything. It just makes everything stand out So before we go today, I just want to point out to you some of the things that you can do with the oil pastel as well um, So I chose colors that would make things stand out. I say that a lot uh, I do I repeat myself a lot, but I always want you to get those principles I want you to understand that those are the things that really make your artwork super special So, you know, I've got a blue background and an orange leaf right there and it kind of coordinates It's sort of pointing towards my orange pumpkin And then I've got this pear and the stem of the pear is curving up a little bit And it's almost like kind of pointing back towards the leaf And so what that does is it creates a path for your eye and there's multiple paths for our eyes in this drawing. So you can see how this gourd's going that way. It kind of takes us towards this. And it just kind of wraps around. And so that's really what you want. You want to create a sense of movement in your drawing. A sense of having your eye travel around. And it just keeps your keeps your interest on the drawing. So it's a fun way to, to do. If you really think about all those things, it's, it's a really fun challenge, I should say. So also, um, you know, in this drawing, I've got some pears, I've got a different kind of apple, I've got my pomegranate, and um, I don't know, I think it just turned out really cool. So you can also smudge the edges a little bit. Uh, I noticed that I was kind of smudgy on the outside border, and so I started to smudge it a little bit more on purpose. And again, it just makes it look kind of artsy, it looks kind of cool. It's a way to make what, you know, you might think, oh man, that's a mistake, I don't like it, but you can just turn it into something you do like, and that's a really important thing to remember. Um, I think that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. hope it's relaxing. Take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll just see you next time.